Welcome, I'm Monica Rea, and I hope you're ready to tackle sewing patterns today because I'm about to break it all the way down for you. Let me know if this scenario sounds a bit familiar. You got inspired to sew, went and acquired all the things, finally got set up and ready, all to open the pattern, and it's like, what is this? Well, in a nutshell, that was me like 10 years ago. I decided to push forward with the pattern I had picked up, which was something like this. It should have been fairly simple, I thought. <laughs> Though I had no idea what I was doing. So long story short, I quit. I got rid of my sewing machine and deemed sewing too difficult. I thought maybe I just loved the idea of sewing, much like I love the idea of running, but it's just not for me. <laughs> When in reality, at the time, I lacked patience and discipline to actually learn it. I actually ended up circling back to sewing about six or seven years later. And now sewing is a huge part of my life. And my goal for this video is to share all the info that would have been super useful for me back then in the hopes that it'll help you in your sewing journey and you won't end up too frustrated. And let's be real, it is a journey, but it's better when you have a compass and a map, right? At the end, I'll share a hack that'll help you get new patterns for cheap. First things first, when you're picking out a pattern, you'll want to be equipped with your measurements, but more on that in a minute. For now, we're just gonna focus on the back of the pattern envelope. Back here, you'll find a lot of important details about the pattern like the difficulty level, suggested fabrics, notions, and body measurements. The fabrics that are listed here are suggested, so you don't have to get the exact fabrics that are listed here, but whatever fabric you do choose to work with, you wanna make sure that it is similar in weight and body. So for example, you wouldn't wanna grab a jersey knit fabric for this because this pattern is not made for that type of fabric. If you wanna know more about buying fabric and shopping for fabric online, I do have a video coming out on that. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to turn on the notifications so you'll be notified when that video comes out. And next is the notions. Notions are important. This is where your basic type materials are listed, like here there's thread. Um, if there's any closures that are needed, it'll be listed here, or any type of elastic, trims, buttons, that'll all be listed here in the notions area. Further down, there'll also be a section that talks about uh, lining, if it's necessary for that particular pattern. Also, um, interfacing. If you see interfacing listed on there anywhere, you'll wanna make sure to grab that as well. And now onto the body measurements. It is imperative to have your body measurements in hand when you get a pattern. So you remember back when I first got my sewing machine and I bought that nightgown pattern. I did not know my measurements at the time when I was at the store. I just glanced at the sizes and I saw, you know, like here it's from size four to 22. So I thought, oh, okay, well I wear size 10. Size 10 is on here, so cool, you know? Wrong. A size 10 in the clothes that you buy from the store and the size 10 on this pattern are wildly different. And I did not know that. <laughs> so I made a chart just so you can see this ridiculous difference. So on the left, you've got your women's size 10, like the clothes that you typically would buy from a store and then your pattern size 10. Look at the bust, like that's a huge variance. The waist, like that's crazy. Like as you can imagine, when I went to try this nightgown on, it was way, way too small. Like I couldn't even put it on. And if I were even able to, I'm pretty sure it would have looked like this. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes, get your measurements and get the right size. It'll save you a lot of headache, trust me. Here's the basics to getting your measurements done properly. When measuring the bust, you wanna make sure that you have your arms lifted up and put the tape measure under your underarms and around the fullest part of your bust. And then as for the waist, you want to get the smallest point. You can also do this by bending side to side and right where it creases, which generally is the smallest point, that's where you want to measure. So when you're measuring your hips, you want to get the widest, fullest point, which would include your butt. So just the widest measurement. Say when you make your measurements and they don't all match up, 
that's completely fine. It's actually a perfect example of when to trace a pattern. Okay, so take for example that your measurements don't match up completely with that that's on the pattern. So in this case, we're gonna use a shirt pattern. This is half of the front part of the shirt, okay? So say that your bust measurements match up. This symbol here, as I'll talk about later, is the apex. This line here, which is the waistline, so say all of your measurements pretty much match that of the size 16 here, right? But maybe your waist is actually closer to a size 14. So with that in mind, seeing that this is where the waistline falls, you would cut out you know, the whole pattern in size 16 as you would normally, but then about two inches or so before the waistline, you would slowly bring it in to the size 14 and then merge it back out to the 16. And so this is a really good example, like I said earlier, of when it would be best to trace the pattern because at least you have access to the other sizes just in case your personal size changes or if you want to make a garment for someone else you have the access and freedom to do that so here's how that would look tracing and you would just place the pattern that you're going to be adjusting so to trace your pattern you can use something like a sharpie or you can use a tracing wheel Say your size is the size 16 so you would be tracing along until about the waistline is here, so about two inches. So you would like gradually bring it in and then gradually bring it out, like so. Here I'll just demonstrate how Sharpie would work tracing the pattern. I'm just gonna put a little dot right here. And as you can see, being that this is tissue paper, it transfers right through to the other side. The basic tools that you'll need are a sewing machine or of course needle and thread, totally a thing. Some fabric, make sure to get the fabric that your pattern calls for. Interfacing if it's needed for that particular pattern. Some fabric marking tools, you can do chalk, markers, what have you. Some scissors, ones for fabric and ones for paper or a rotary cutter, make sure you have a mat. Ruler, preferably clear, but whatever kind of ruler. An iron to keep things straight. Measuring tape, of course. Muslin or any type of scrap fabric like bed sheets. And of course, notions if called for. Pins or clips. If applicable, pattern paper. You should read over the instructions before you get started doing anything. You'll see things like cutting layouts, um, how the right and wrong sides of fabric will be depicted. This is also where seam allowance is mentioned. Usually most patterns have a seam allowance of 5 eighths of an inch already included. So there's nothing extra you would need to do regarding that. If at any time the seam allowance is different or changes, the instructions will tell you. If the pattern doesn't have seam allowance included, you'll need to add your desired amount before you cut anything out. The instructions do sometimes have a few definitions for the terminology and the markings that are used. Although a lot of the times for beginners, the helpful tidbits that they include can still have you a bit confused. So let's decode some of that, shall we? So the term apex usually refers to the highest point or tip of a particular area. So as it pertains to a sewing pattern, usually you'll see this symbol used on or near the bust line to help you identify where the highest point of the bust should align. Ultimately, the apex symbol is one of those symbols that you would just go ahead and transfer onto the fabric and or the pattern that you traced. 
So your button and buttonhole symbol will look like this. The button is the X and then of course the buttonhole looks like a buttonhole. <laughs> You'll want to transfer these markings onto the fabric. When you are sewing buttonholes, make sure that you're reinforcing it with some type of interfacing. That'll make them last much longer. The cut line's pretty straightforward. You just find your size and cut along that line. Unless, of course, you need to make some type of adjustments. Darts are used to give contour, so you'll usually see these in areas where there are curves, like at the bust, waist, and hips. There are many different types of darts, but overall the purpose of darts is to give a garment a more tailored fit. Whenever you see the fold line on a pattern, it is going to be a straight edge because that edge is meant to be put up against the folded edge of your fabric. So that way, when you cut it out, when you unfold it, it would be a mirror image. So you see this a lot of times with waistbands, collars, and bodices, like the bodice back or front, depends. So this is the gathering symbol. It's used in various ways but essentially you would sew two lines of basting stitches in between the two circles and gather in that space. The grain line is an imaginary line that runs parallel to the selvage edges of the fabric. So this is the selvage. And patterns often instruct you to place the lengthwise grain along specific parts of the garment for stability and proper drape. So when in doubt, when you see the grain line, just make sure that that line is parallel to your salvage when you're placing your pattern pieces on the fabric. And then the lengthen and shorten symbol, you'll see this in various pattern pieces. Essentially, this is the point of the pattern piece where you can lengthen and shorten. So if you're going to shorten, you can just fold it up at this point. So if you're gonna shorten it, you can fold it up at this point. And if you're gonna lengthen it, just cut through the middle and use a piece of paper in between to adjust the length however much you need to. So notches you're gonna find on every pattern piece pretty much. These are used to make sure that your pattern pieces line up. So you definitely wanna transfer the notches and there's many ways to do this as well. And last but not least, we have the pleat symbol. Generally, it'll look something similar to this. It'll tell you in which way to fold the fabric if your pleats are going to the left or to the right. And this is definitely a symbol that you wanna transfer. And those are pretty much all the symbols and markings that you'll see in most sewing patterns. On to the next step. Once you're at the point of pinning your pattern pieces to the fabric, you wanna make sure that they're securely attached together, especially around the edges of the pattern. This will be very useful when it comes time to cut them out. You can either transfer the markings before or after the pieces are cut out. It just depends on what your preference is. And there are many ways to do it. Next up, my least favorite part, cutting out the pattern pieces. Even though it feels like it takes forever to do, it's important that you take your time. That way you don't end up with jagged pieces or pieces that are just altogether uneven because of course that will cause problems down the line. Well, there you have it. I hope this was able to shed some light, making sewing patterns less daunting and more doable. And now for that hack. So, most craft stores actually have sales on their patterns. These sales are usually a few days long each month. Take, for example, Joann's. If you go onto their website and pull up their weekly ad, 
Okay, so here on Joanne's homepage, you would just come up here to coupons and weekly ad, and then scroll down to sewing supplies. And here's where you would find which patterns are on sale. But of course, when I'm filming this, they don't have any sales on patterns, but I promise you, last weekend and the weekend before, they had Butterwick, uh, Simplicity, and Vogue patterns that were on sale. This is their current weekly ad for January 11th to the 31st, so I don't believe they're gonna have any more sales on patterns this month since it's not in here. However, at least you know where to look. But usually when the patterns are on sale, they're $1.99 per pattern in store, and then they're like 30% off online. But of course, this isn't the only place to look. We can also look over on simplicity.com and they probably have sales too. Now I will say usually there is a limit of about 10 patterns that you can buy at a time when these sales are going on. But still, that's like 10 patterns for the price of one a lot of the time. I've also seen other stores like Hobby Lobby have similar sales. You just need to do a little bit of digging and you'll find it. So you're welcome. <laughs> there will be more videos like this coming up, so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to add, leave it down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.